to drag over all these pipes that we've drawn to select and delete them. Now we are going to draw this junction right here. So by far we have started from the farthest point and uh, connected a pipe to the riser. And now we are going to draw this junction along the pipe and connect it to the main part. Now to go with the golden left hand rule or in this case which is for the drains we can call it the brown left hand rule. We're going to activate the pipe command PI. First we're heading to the fitting types then the system type, then the size of the pipe. But what should we do about the elevation? Our main pipe right here had a slope, so we don't have a precise elevation so we can give it to this junction as well. Therefore, we can go use this inherit elevation command. If you remember, this inherit elevation was also practical when we were talking about ducts. As in, if I activate Inherit Elevation and then click wherever, it's going to inherit the elevation of that part which we clicked on. So, we can either give a precise elevation which we already know, or we could just use Inherit Elevation. Now, the next item, item number 5, is the slope, which here we're going to have to draw a slope up. So, we're going to click on Slope Up 1%. Now, before we start to draw, first let's agree on a rule so we don't make any mistakes about these slopes. So whenever we're drawing pipes or junctions and getting close to area drains, getting close here actually has a positive meaning to it. So whenever we're getting close to an area drain, the slope would be positive which means that it's going to be a slope up. Now whenever we are going far from the area drain, as in starting from that point, in this case, going farther has a negative meaning to it. So when we're getting farther, the slope would be negative and it would be going down. So always remember when you're getting close to the drain, you use, you use slope up. Or when you're going farther, it's slope down. So keep this in your mind as a rule so you don't make any mistakes. Alright, so now the slope is going up. I'm going to go here and click on the pipe. But before I do that, check out the elevation. It's 3591. Now once we click, it changes to 3442. So now it just inherited the elevation from exactly the point which we clicked on. Now we're going to click again, which gives us a T or a triode. Now we click again near the drain and press escape. Now if for example we don't use inherit elevation or even forget to give it a number, or in other words, we forget about the left hand rule for whatever reason and then go click and then at a 45 degree angle click again then press escape. We see that we did draw it. But what's the problem here? You see we did draw it but as you can see after the T we got an extra fitting. As you can see this one's reducer PVC. Let's go check it out in 3D to see how it turned out. First I'm going to drag to select them and then click on selection box. So we can only see this part in 3D. Do you see how it looks like? It looks a little tilted. Kind of like it had no choice but to connect these pipes together. And in order to do that, it has put a reducer. And let me tell you that this reducer doesn't mean that it reduces the sizes. It was just the software's way of showing us the change in elevations. So after the T, it placed a reducer and then connected it to a pipe. Also, when we viewed it in 3D, we saw that it was all wrong. So always pay attention to the plan. If you ever saw something extra was placed on its own, you should know that something was wrong. So now I'm going to drag and select the pipe and the reducer, then delete them. And now to remove the T, I'm going to click and select it. Then click on the minus right here so that it would be removed. Once it's removed, the pipe itself remains. Now let me press Ctrl Z. And if I delete the T this time, as you can see a gap will be created in the pipe. And now to connect them, for example, I could use trim shortcut TR to connect this with this. So the best way was selecting the T and clicking the minus sign. Now I'm going to get the pipe command shortcut PI. And in case this elevation was a little too high, for example, let's say that it was 4,000. 
let's assume that we've forgotten to change the elevation and it's remaining as it is. Now we're going to click and click here again. Then we see that it's been connected from above the pipe. Let me expand it from above a little. So as you can see, even this is wrong because it's now going into the beam. It is now interrupting other items. It's gone into the ceiling. So that's one thing. Now in some other cases, the elevation could be something not too different than what it needs to be, where neither a reducer could be placed, nor is it possible for the software to uh, make the junction going from above. And because of that, we would get an error. For example, here I'm going to type in 3600. And now let's go click here to see what's going to happen. And as you can see, we get an error saying that the elevations don't match. There is no solution for it, and the software can't do anything about it. So it says no auto root solution was found. So there was no automatic solution like a reducer to fix it. So knowing when you need to use inherit elevation, or when you have to enter a precise elevation, is very important. So now I'm going to press escape, and again I'm going to drag to select this pipe, also, I'm going to drag a little bit higher to select the elbow. Then I'm going to delete them and to remove the T, I'm going to click on the minus. Here's another thing. I'll get the pipe command PI. Now, when we were trying to draw the pipe from the area drain to the riser, it was sloped down. Now, let's assume that we drew slope up by mistake, like so. I just drew a slope up pipe. Let's say that we just missed the point. Now here we want to draw a junction, PI, then remember the left hand rule. So fitting PVC system type, then adjust the sizes. Then for the elevation, we're going to use inherit elevation. And as for the slope, we're getting close to the drain, so slope up. And then we'll think that everything's okay and then start to draw. So we're going to click. Then we see that we got a strange shape. We don't have a T like this. This is what a correct T looks like. So, in case you ever see a fit-in like this one, which looked abnormal and unusual, then you would know that your slope is wrong. In fact, the slope of your main pipe is wrong. This one. The slope is incorrect. Otherwise, if this one's slope is wrong, first I'm going to press PI, then check all the items, also activate inherit elevation, but select slope down instead of slope up. So we still are able to draw it, even though it's been drawn as a slope down, but it still has been placed. But if for a case like this, we see a strange fitting and things look unusual to us, we would know that the direction and the slope of the main pipe was wrong. As in, instead of being sloped down, it's been drawn slope up. So those were some things about the slope of pipes. Now I'm going to drag to select and delete this. Also here we're going to delete the pipe and remove the T using the minus. Let's take a look right here. We have drawn everything according to the plan, but the pipe is going into the pillar. Maybe our plan was a single line and it didn't have this thing happen in it. So I'm going to press the shortcut BX or the selection box so we can see this part in 3D. Do you see that? This corner of the pipe is going into the pillar. So let's go fix this on the spot in order to rectify this. First we can select the elbow and if we move this to the left by using the arrow keys in the keyboard we'll notice that this elbow is going higher and therefore they're getting closer. And basically this elbow is getting farther from the pillar. So now it looks fine let's go check it in 3D as well. And now we see that that interruption is gone and the elbow is now farther from the pillar. Now we want to continue drawing the rest of it. Here for the drain pipes, we never use crosses. So basically we have no such thing as a cross. So now we have to place two consecutive T's so we can draw the junctions over on this side. Now another point to be considered is that we're going to continue drawing according to the plan. As in, it's not like we're going to start drawing from up here, then go down and get stuck as to what we need to do then. 
Or for example, like here, we started drawing from the base pipe. If I were to start drawing from here, then continue toward the pipe, for example, I'm going to press PI and check everything, PVC, WP, size and elevation, and it's also sloped down. We're going to go click, click, and click again. So now we've gotten to this point and we're now stuck. We don't know the elevation of the pipe and whether or not they're going to be connected. So we have to start drawing from the main parts. So now to draw the rest of this path, I'm going to start drawing from the main pipe. So now if we click on this elbow and then click on this plus sign next to it, it will turn into a T. Just like how when we would click on a T and because it's in a corner right here, it will turn into an elbow. And if it's in the middle of a pipe, it will just connect them. So T's and elbows are interchangeable. Now we're going to click on the plus sign to turn the elbow to a T. Now to continue, we're going to calculate a little. We want to draw from here and go up and get close to the area drain. We said getting close has a positive meaning, so it means that our slope needs to be up. Therefore, we're going to go to our starting point, right click and click on draw pipe. And we've already checked the fitting type and the system type, as well as the size of the pipe. And this time we don't need to enter an elevation once we clicked on draw pipe, it will get the elevation of its starting point. Also slope is up and now we've checked all the five items. And now we can draw an angular pipe, so we're going to click straight ahead and then give it an angle. Also the fact that it's a little bit distant from what we have in the plan is no big deal. So we're going to click because we're going to fix that later. Now we go up and click, then 45 degree angle and click. And then near the area drain, we're going to click and press escape. All right, now, do you see what it looks like here? Now, in order to turn this elbow to a T and place a clean out over here, CO, we said previously it was clean out. We're going to select the elbow and click on the plus sign. Now we've got a T and we have to place our clean out here. But first, I'm going to press Control Z. If these two elbows were a little bit closer, like I'm going to use the arrow keys to move this one to the left. And now you know that for a T we need this amount of space. But it's too tight here. If I click on the plus sign of the elbow and turn it into a T, you see that these two fittings interrupted one another and also we got an error. It says the converted fitting, which is referring to uh, this elbow which we converted to a T. This actually was not defined in the routing preference. So basically it says that these fittings interrupting one another is not defined. So to continue, we need to find another way. In case you ever get this converted fitting error, you would know that basically you don't have enough space. So now I'm going to select the elbow and move it to the right. And then I'm going to click on the plus sign. And as you can see, we just got a T because we had enough space. So now we can select this elbow and the T and the little pipe in between them all together. Then move all of them to the right a little bit to make them as similar as possible to the plan. But all in all, if we compare our drawing to the lines that we have in the plan, they are still different. Actually, in our CAD plans, because we are drawing with single lines, as you can see, the space required for a T was not considered here. It's just two consecutive lines. But we know that a T requires a specific amount of space. So the Revit file which we are modeling naturally would turn out a little different than the plan. So remember that this is nothing you need to worry about. But the important thing is that you have proper connections and slopes and fittings throughout your model. Alright, so let's go through that again. We're going to start to draw from a point. If we wanted to add something in the middle of a pipe, we would need to use inherit elevation. But if we are drawing something uh, starting from the end of a pipe or a fitting, we're going to right click and click on draw pipe and then draw what we were going to. So for specifying the elevations, for example, I'm going to press PI. You can either enter a precise number of elevation or you can right click and then go to draw pipe or you could use inherit elevation. 
So whenever I say check your elevation, you can use one of these three ways to do that. Remember to pay attention to your slopes as well. We said that slope up was for when we're getting close to area drains. Whatever your starting point may be, and slope down is for when you're getting farther from the area drain. Now, as for the next point, let me tell you that when you have a pipe or a fitting, that would be your starting point for your drawing. You shouldn't start from somewhere else and then get stuck when you get close to your main part. Now, let's say that, for example, imagine that here we had lots of restrooms and pipe installations and you have drawn all of them so far as here and you've already drawn this one as well and now you have to connect all these together it's just an assumption let's say that we've come this far and now we don't know what to do so how are we supposed to fix this it was just a mistake it just happened and the elevations don't match but now we still have to connect these pipes together now that you've come this far you can finish the pipe starting from here first let me minimize this a little to make more space now we get the pipe command PI. Now you check the items PVC, WP. The size is correct. Now for the elevation, because we're in the middle of the pipe, we use inherit elevation, slope up 1%. Now if you move the mouse around here, do you see how their axis would be highlighted? This means that you are along the axis, so click. Now we don't connect them, but we stop near and press escape. Now, do you remember when we were kids and we used to play this game where we would stand on the end of a line and we would sing Gerdu Shekastam, Gerdu Shekastam. We would just continue this way step by step until our feet met and one of us stepped on the other. This is the same thing. This one came all this way and said Gerdu and this one came forward a bit and said Shekastam. Now this one needs to come forward as well as this one. We have to make them closer bit by bit until they meet. But don't get me wrong, it's not like I'm going to drag each of them little by little. But we're going to do that in section. So we're going to select section and click. Then create a section along the pipes at a 45 degree angle. Also minimize it. And I'm going to make the section lines closer to the pipes as well. Now we right click and go to view. Now we're going to set the detail level on fine and well shaded. Do you see how their elevations don't match? But first you have to figure out which one's correct. If this one's correct, it would be the base, and you could align this with it. Or vice versa, if this one's correct, you align this one. By matching and adjusting, we mean having a proper elevation which doesn't interrupt the beam. Alright, now I'm going to align them AL. Then I'm going to select the axis of this one as the base, and align it with this one. Now we press escape, so this came forward. This one said Gerdu and the other said Shekasta. Now the next step is connecting them using Trim TR. This one is the base and we're going to connect it to this one. Now once we get the no auto root solution error, we can guess that maybe their elevations are not matching in the plan either. So I'm going to align them again this one with this one. Then again Trim TR and try to connect them and there we go. Now let's say that maybe our mouse pointer moved by thousandth of a millimeter and they haven't been aligned properly. So remember, if you get an error and you can't continue, even though you're sure that you've aligned them in section, try to align them again in the drawing area so that you'll be able to connect them. So in case it was necessary, you have this option at hand. But try to do all this adjusting elevations and aligning in section when you still haven't connected your pipes to your area drains. This is for when you're working with horizontal pipes. If you're working with vertical ones, that would be a problem. Now that's about this part. And in the next video, we're going to model this right side and work on the risers and area drains.